my home. I like to consider this my sanctuary. I'm going to make my dragonfly clay print, and I'm going to begin by using polymer clay. I like to take the light color clay with a little bit of green, and I like to run it through the pasta machine. I'll repeatedly fold this sheet and pass it through the pasta machine until I come up with a blend I like that's suitable for the image I want to use. Now I'm going to stamp my image onto the clay. Now that the stamp is inked up, I can apply it to the surface of the clay. I have to press, press, press. Then I carefully remove it. Now I need to make a striped leaf cane. And to do that, I need medium green, dark green, and an off white. I need to make the green in several different thicknesses. I don't want the white to be that prominent, so I'll make it a really thin sheet. Now I'm going to stack it. I'll need to cut this and restack it again. I'm happy with the way the leaf looks, but one more thing, I'm gonna wrap it with a little bit of brown clay. I'm going to turn this cane into leaves and apply it to the dragonfly clay print. I do this by pinching one end to make it narrow. Pinching and pulling, pinching and pulling. Now I'll begin to apply the striped leaves to the clay print. I start at the top and work my way down. to make a log for the clay print because I like to keep it natural and I want it to look like a woodland setting. I'll take a dark brown and a lighter brown. I'll mishmash these two colors together till it starts to look like a log color. I'll take a smaller piece and roll it out and slightly flatten it so it resembles a little log. I'll then take it and apply it to the clay print, pressing it gently to hold it in place. Now I'm just going to texturize this till it starts to look like bark. Can you tell I'm from Boston? Then I need to make it look like a log. So I'll push down harder on this end, and I'll actually open it up. I'll even poke a few holes in it to give it a natural look. Now I'll make a small branch in the same manner and add that to the log. I've finished with the left side of my clay print. Now I need to get to work on the right side. And to this side, I'll add cattails and small rocks. To make the cattail leaves, I'll need two shades of green and a little bit of gold. I'll condition these by kneading them. I'll begin rolling the clay into assorted length and width snakes. Once I've rolled out my snakes, it's time to twist them together. I twist and I bend and then I roll. And I just keep rolling and twisting and rolling and twisting until I get a nice leafery green color that I like. I need to make three of these. Now I'll make the leaves. I roll these into snakes. Not very thin and not very thick. Just right. Now I need to apply the stems for the actual cattails. I'll put three of these at random heights. I need to add the leaves to the stems on the cattail. I need to roll them all flat first. As I add them, I'll twist them and twirl them so that they will resemble real cattail leaves. This is the inspiration for my cattail. I have two cats and a big Doberman Pinscher that I'm training. Now I need to add the actual cattail. I take the medium brown clay, and I need to make three oval shapes. I'm going to add these to the stems. Real cattails have texture, so to add texture to my cattails, I'll use, again, my trusty polymer clay tool. I roll it on the surface of each cattail, and it leaves a little texture behind. I've made these rocks. I'll use them to anchor my cattails. This is a double-ended stylus tool. I'll randomly poke holes using both ends of the stylus tool. And I have one more little embellishment that I want to add. Perfect. Just what I needed. 
I'll bake this piece for about 30 minutes at 265 degrees. I've let my clay print cool for about an hour. It looks a little too new, so I think I need to antique it. I use an old scruffy paintbrush, the brown acrylic paint, and I like to use old worn out sponges because they're softer. I work in small areas at a time, putting the paint on and then wiping it off with the damp sponge. My clay print is now dry and framed. She likes it. See something else I do? I'm gonna make this cool cat out of clay scrap. I'll take these three colors and I'll just squeeze them together till I get them flat enough to start to run through the pasta machine. Now I'm going to roll it from one end to the other like a jelly roll. I'm going to taper one end of this small piece of clay. I've rolled out this end smaller because that's going to be the tail for my cat. Now what I'm going to do is gently flatten this piece out. This will become the head and the body of the cat. I need to give my cat ears. The cat needs to be able to sit on the ice cube. So now he's sitting up. This tail seems pretty long, so I'll just gently pinch it off and curl it in the front. I've rolled out two small yellow balls of clay. These will become part of his eyes. I've got two really small black onyx beads. These will become his pupils. Now I have to give him some eyelids. I'm just going to use my needle tool to shape his expression. I've used some blue clay to roll out the cheeks for my cat. Now he gets a nose. I've taken the tiniest little ball of blue clay. This will become his bottom lip. He needs something else. I think I'll make him a collar. My kitty needs some bling. I'll need to add a small ball of red clay to the front of his collar. The bling I like to use is crystal. He still needs one more thing. Well, maybe six more things. My cat needs whiskers. I've taken some wire lengths and I've bent them with my pliers so that they look all kinked up. My cat is hot. To cool him down, I'm gonna put him on this ice cube. I purchased it in the floral department of the local craft store. I'm putting the cat into the oven on the ice cube so that as he bakes, he'll conform to any surface dent in the ice cube itself. I'll bake the cat for approximately 30 minutes at 265 degrees. I've epoxied him to the ice cube, and now my cool cat is done.